If a printer says it is a carbon fiber printer and it doesn't actually lay down raw carbon fiber, it's a gimmick. But we're seeing a lot more of these consumer grade, inexpensive printers that are claiming to be carbon fiber printers or carbon fiber nylon, but designed for carbon fiber, nylon, etc. They'll call and they'll say, hey, can this printer print carbon fiber? And that's carbon a problem. Carbon fiber what? Yeah, exactly. Carbon fiber what? Uh, filament? Carbon, carbon fiber? Continuous no. toe? Uh, Resin carbon fiber like you get in right. sheets? Absolutely not. No, not definitely, even close. Yeah. Exactly. What they are referring to is carbon fiber nylon, carbon fiber polycarbonate, carbon fiber PLA, carbon fiber peak and ultimate. I think a lot of people also get confused. They think, you know what Mark Forge does by the continuous toe thing? Yeah. They're right. like, how much carbon fiber is like, it's not a solid string of carbon fiber. That's not how these filaments work. So you've got primarily filaments, which have different types of carbon fiber embedded in them. So you basically Mainly have either milled carbon yeah. or chopped carbon fibers and then different grades of those carbon, which have uh, different tensile moduluses and whatnot. But generally, milled carbon makes stuff weaker, uh, but it looks nice. And then chopped carbon actually adds to the rigidity and stiffness. So that's filament, when you have carbon fiber infused filament. So if you go on Amazon and you see a carbon fiber PLA, that is, there's no benefit. It looks nice. Generally, it's a finish. generally. Some of them, they've actually gotten better over the years to where they are chopped carbon. Okay. But PLA is already so rigid that it probably doesn't help much at all. And then you have Mark Forged, which is continuous carbon fiber toe, where they actually put legitimate carbon fiber strands throughout a part on the X and Y axis. So on the X and Y axis, you have a lot more rigidity. So for some applications where that's the angle that the rigidity needs to be, it can be really, really good, but it's also insanely expensive. Machines are really expensive. The build volumes are small. The, they're not heated or anything like that. And they're using proprietary materials. So you're stuck into paying three, four, 10 times the cost of the material that you would be paying on an open printer. And then you've got licensing fees wow. and yearly service plans and all this stuff. So a lot of customers call and I have to explain the mythos that, you know, there aren't, there are very, very tiny pieces of carbon fiber in here, but this is not, we're not laying down sheets of carbon fiber. That's not what the printer's doing. I mean, you can go as far as continuous composites, a uh, Idaho based company that uses giant robot arms and they can build full airplane wings with the, you know, that's carbon fiber printing. And then, then you've got SLS where it's the powder and the carbon fiber is in the powder and you're laser centering it and then you have carbon fiber in there, adds rigidity, et cetera, once again. Compared to FDM though, it's interesting because the fibers actually align when they're coming out of the nozzle. Whereas with SLS, I would imagine it's much more random. The way I'm going to boil this down is unless you are actually purchasing a machine that, you know, continuous carbon fiber, that it's a, it's a gimmick. The trend right now for good reason is carbon fiber, very high percentage of carbon fiber in nylons. If you're going to be using an HTN high temperature nylon in a machine without an actively heated chamber, I don't see the point. The material's expensive, and if it's going to be a very, very large part, you're just doing yourself a disservice. I see so many printers, it's like high temp. What's high temp? 300C. What we're really talking about is the plethora of consumer grade machines that are claiming to be carbon fiber 3D printers or carbon fiber, like Zine for carbon fiber nylon and stuff like that, when they're not. These machines are affordable. They're you know, a couple thousand dollars or whatever, but they're using an enclosed chamber, not a heated chamber, meaning you're gonna get lower mechanical passive properties. Passive actively heated. Right, like passive is good. You can get to 60C or so, and that will help. You will, you know, warping and everything else like that is it's really gonna help. But if you don't have that actively heated and you're not getting up into the 70, 80, 90, 100 C. By their logic, you can turn your Ender 3 into a carbon fiber machine by getting a higher quality nozzle yeah. hot end and like all metal extruder yeah. so you don't wear out the gears and 
I mean, that's in, in my mind. The, the biggest thing that gets me is the machines that are like designed for CF nylon and their nozzles go to 280 or 300. And I'm like 20 degrees away from being able to do most of the high temp nylons at the lowest settings. Yeah. Uh, but really, I mean, like up into 350, what, like what's going on? The nylons we use, high temp Essentium's HTN CF25, uh, the 3DX Tech's HTN PPA, CF. The names are crazy. They'll give you the temperature range on, on there, right? Almost every single time from all of my experimenting and, and use of the material, 300C is good for 0.4 nozzle at, at 35 millimeters a second. If you want to use a bigger nozzle or move at some considerable speed, you're going to need to go up to 310, 315, 320, especially if you're going up into 0.6 and 0.8 nozzles. Jay, what's the hottest you think you've ever printed HTN? HTN? Yeah. Yeah, how hot do you think? 350? 370? 330. 330. Yeah. It's not high temp unless it has an actively heated chamber, 90 minimum, honestly, because you can't print peak below that, really, or Ultim, really. A high temp hot end is 400, not 300. 100%. Yeah, that's just how it is. And, and they're going around calling it high temp when it's not. Can you, can you print peak? If, the, your printer's not high temp if it can't print peak or ultim. So that's what these carbon fiber machines are. A printer that can do an extra 40 degrees on the hot end and they put some acrylic around it and they call it a high temp machine. There's a lot of printers in the 1000 to $2,000, $5,000 range that are like carbon fiber, CF version. Um, Bamboo Labs, let's just talk about that. Looks amazing. I love what they're doing, the LiDAR, et cetera. Um, I want one. But it's got a hardened, yeah, like, I want one for home. You know, hardened steel nozzle enclosure. So you're getting up to 50, 60 Celsius in the chamber from the ambient heat. That's great. Which is better than nothing. Yeah, awesome. If you want full mechanical properties, you have to be higher temperature than that. You need that that polymer close to its TG while you're depositing the layers, depending if it's semi-crystalline or not, to get that full layer adhesion and to not have internal stresses throughout the part. When you're printing on an open printer or something like that, uh, I mean, an open printer, man, you're gonna have you're gonna have all kinds of warping. You can get and, you and, go away with small parts, you know, that tall. Yeah, yeah. In a PA6. Right, if you crank the bed temp, you'll do all right. You need to have the high temperature resistance for stuff under the hood, inside the car, electronics, whatever. You need to have a lot of strength and rigidity so that it stays in place. Where does it's that come from? Break. Where does that come from? Yeah. What do you mean? Oh. A heated, a actively so, heated chamber. So that, that's gonna come from the material. So as you're building a part up, you've got the heated bed, and if you have no actively heated chamber, as you get further away from the bed, the temperature of the part's gonna cool down. Now that's gonna make it uh, shrink and expand at different rates. It's gonna change, it's gonna add internal stresses in areas that you don't necessarily want it. And it's not gonna be a consistent part throughout. When you have the chamber at full temp, for the right temp for that material, usually close to the glass transition point, then the material is relaxed as you're depositing all the material all the way up to the top and then it all cools together. And that means the internal stresses, you're not getting differences throughout the part. So you're um, not gonna have weakness at layer lines and you're also not gonna have it rip itself from the bed. Right, right, yeah, that, that's one of the big things is just keeping it stuck down to the bed. Um, check out nanopolymer adhesive for that, by the way, with a heated build plate and almost any material, it's incredible. But there's a major brand that everyone owns that has a high temp printer out and it goes to 300 on the nozzle, wow. And it has a they the call chamber. It high, they call it high temp. Yeah, that's bullshit uh, because HTN, high temperature nylon, PPA, you might know it as Essentium, HTN, CF25, or 3DX Tech. Black the, aluminum. The black aluminum, which I don't like calling it because it's only as strong as aluminum in terms of rigidity. The aluminum yep. will always Tensile be superior. Strength. In the X and Y. Um, yes, you could print it on one of these machines you could buy at Micro Center. At its absolute max, you're at 300 with a 0.4 nozzle, 0.2 layer height, 45 millimeters a second is the hardest I'd push that. So it would take a very long time. Let me ask you this, why does that matter? Why does printing with a bigger nozzle and hotter, why does that matter? What benefit is that gonna give somebody with that printer that can print bigger nozzles faster? As you know, I am the big layer guy. 
I don't, all my machines have 0.6. I mean, why 3D printers come with a 0.4 nozzle as standard nowadays, I don't know. Use a 0.6 if you can. Where is the weak point of a 3D print? Where the layers intersect. Layers. So if you add heat and use a bigger nozzle that retains the heat better, as that larger layer goes over, it's going to more efficiently meld to the layer below it and, and, and cause greater strength and you'll be having less layer lines, which are points of weaknesses. You're holding on to a lot of thermal energy then in each one of those layers. That's why an actively heated chamber is crucial so you don't build up internal stresses if you're using a bigger nozzle. But anyway, if you're doing production, why would you want to be printing with a 0.4 nozzle at a slow speed? which you're gonna absolutely be stuck to with a 300C printer without an actively heated chamber. You just can't push it further than that. If you're gonna be doing nylons, carbon fiber or not, get a machine with an actively heated chamber, which there aren't many of. So people build them, and then you have to start making your own machine. If you're going that far, you should just get a high temperature printer that start at $6,500, $7,000. They're not all, you know, super expensive. If you're going to be doing this in a professional environment, why limit yourself to any material? Spend a, a bit extra money to get a high temp machine. They can print any material known to man if it's in 1.75. We'll go into this later, but spare yourself the headache of modifying a machine. I have so many machines at home that are just in boxes and pieces because it's like, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mod it. I, would, I guarantee you I would have saved money if I just bought a high temp printer that was built well three years ago and four, it didn't do any of that. And I know what I'm doing. It just doesn't always work out the way you want it to and then you have to. If you're looking to get into printing carbon fiber, it depends who you are. If you're a consumer, you're a hobbyist, you're doing this at home, you're making cool looking parts, beautiful parts, get hey, any you printer. beautiful parts, get, yeah. Pretty much any printer. Uh, get an enclosure, they do, it'll help. do 300. But if you're in business, if you're in industry, if you're making, like say, we work with a lot of automotive companies and, and like off-roading and trophy trucks and, and crazy four by fours. And then we also do a lot of uh, aerospace work, a lot of uh, actual space work, medical, oil and gas, et cetera. That's way in the high temps though. Most of those are, are more than high temps, but for carbon fiber, you need a material that's gonna be strong, that's probably in the lower end, either polycarbonate or nylon. And polycarbonate's out the window on all these machines. The nozzle can't even print it most of the time. Well, it's, um, that's, that's actively heated chamber, absolutely required. <clears throat> Um, and that's just the nature of polycarbonate. Metal, if you're actually, you hear about black aluminum, blah, blah, blah. If you are gonna be using this in your shop and you're trying and, and, and you're having to have parts made out of aluminum and you're trying to get around that, replace it, make things faster, <clears throat> the answer is high temperature nylon is the only way to get close to that safely. The only way to print high temperature nylon is with a high temp machine because it wants 300 and then if you want a bigger nozzle you need to be, have overhead of to at least 330 plus a heated chamber so that's where i'm going with that if you are in any kind of professional industry i'm going to just say go to the high temp machine yeah. because pa6 the non-high temp just normal nylon is great but don't expect to be replacing any aluminum parts with it this the htn this stuff is a miracle 150 Celsius, as long as you want. No, no, that's PA6 is 150 Celsius. Oh, as long no, as you want. No, that's HTN. Right, HTN CF25. 20,000 hours use. 20,000 hours. And 150 HTN. Celsius, which is, Matt, what is 150 <clears throat> Celsius in America, in Eagles? Free, freedom units. So 302 Jesus. Fahrenheit. It really comes down to if you're in business making parts that you're going to sell or you're going to use in a product and you need to be absolutely mechanically strong, have mechanical integrity and be the best part it possibly can be. You have to have a heated chamber and you want to have a machine that has more than you need. So 300C ain't gonna cut it because we print HTN at 330 half most of the time. So you want like 400. We supply industrial business grade 3D printers and 3D scanners. So if you're interested in that or you need some help, we're here to answer all your questions. Give us a call, shoot us an email. We love hearing from you. Other than that, have a positive rest of the day. Thanks for watching to have, oh, wait. Don't uh, shoot an email. I don't, I don't like emails, just call. Just call, just call. Please. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a positive rest of the day. See you on the next one.